Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with our host, Christina Nichman. Our guest today is James Whitaker, best-selling author, entrepreneur, and movie producer, is proud to announce his new release and movie, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. Get your very own copy today of Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy at all major retailers and watch the movie at tgrmovie.com. Hi, James. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. We're so blessed to have you here today. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Christina. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, and I'm so blessed that your your PR people reached out to me because you have created a wonderful uh, book and movie based on one of my all-time favorite business books and self-help books, and that is Think and Grow Rich. Your book is Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, where you take very successful people from today and, and take the points that were kind of outlined in Think and Grow Rich and show how these very successful people today that we can emulate and and learn from have done just what other people have done that were outlined in Think and Grow Rich, the wonderful um, first book that um, you've you've taken for your movie and your new book. Share with us a little bit about your background. What kind of brought you to creating this book and movie? Yeah, I've got a bit of an eclectic background, actually. So I spent 10 years back in financial planning in Australia and the corporate world. And then I moved to America after that. And for the last five years, I've been involved in a number of entrepreneurial ventures. But the background in financial planning really gave me an insight into just how powerful it can be for people to be very engaged with their personal finance because mm. the reality is that most people are, are not engaged with their personal finance at all. They're just very, very reactive and let things happen and that's the way that people get into trouble. But over the last five years with the other ventures that I've been involved in, I've really uh, understood the importance of getting your physical and your mental health back on track as well. So. What I'm most passionate about now is helping people take ownership of their financial, physical and mental health, because I think that's such an important combination. So when I had the opportunity to meet the filmmakers who were looking at bringing Think and Grow Rich to the uh, big screen for the first time was something that I was deeply passionate about. I, I understood their grandiose vision very, very quickly, and I think they appreciated the energy that I brought to the project as well. So here we are. It's all just been released and it's very, very exciting. Yeah. And have you always had a passion for this message in this book as well? Yeah, I, I have actually. I, I, yeah, I, I grew up listening to a lot of Jim Rowan audio recordings as a, as a kid, often just secondhand via what my parents were listening to. And it's amazing how much kids can actually pick up and remember. So I've always had a passion for wanting to help people and just help people uh, think bigger than their circumstances, just mm-hmm. think about what else is possible. And give them resources and tools so they can develop that unwavering belief in themselves. And mm. with the, the people that we've got in this book and this film, we've got people who are, you know, have been hit by a truck and, and have gone on to extraordinary success. We've got people like Jim Stovall, who has been blind from the age of 17 and then has gone on to write 30 best-selling books. We've got people who have been affected by drugs for 10 years of their, mm. of their life. We've got so many different things and the one of the themes that I think or that I hope people will start to get out of the book and the film is that Mm -hmm. there is no valid excuse for permanent defeat. You really can at any time take control of your life. Yeah. And and that's one thing I pulled from the original Think and Grow Rich and your book and movie is that often we feel failure is just the end. Uh, I actually failed. I had a bankruptcy a number of years ago and, and people feel like, well, that's it. I failed. I've gone bankrupt. There's no going forward for me. And, and interestingly, the people who are most successful in life and who've created some of the wonderful inventions that we now take for granted had failed over and over and over again, but did not give up. They had the tenacity, the will to see the end result goal and to hold fast to it till they got the actual desired um, outcome. And I think that's something we can all learn from, from your movie and from your book. Definitely. It's such a core theme of success. And for most of these people, they actually were able to achieve their, their biggest success right after their biggest failure. It's just very, very difficult in the time to have the persistence to, to go forward. But what Thinking Grow Rich teaches you, it's very much a linear approach to success. It's not this airy fairy thing where we just try and think positively. Of course, the positive mental attitude is such an important part of Napoleon Hill's teachings. But when you add that in with this desire and decision and the mastermind principle and faith and organized planning and specialized knowledge, there is so much to it. An auto suggestion. It's a, a really great, powerful way 
that you can equip yourself that when failure inevitably hits, because that is, failure will strike. It's, it's absolutely inevitable, but that is when it will become the most defining point of your life is how you react and respond mm. when you first says that you actually need to pay a bigger price than you might originally have thought for your success. Mm -hmm. One of the examples that we use in the book is Sarah Blakely, who is the youngest self-made billionaire of all time. She was uh, went down to the manufacturing area of America to find a manufacturer for her unique shapewear garment, which ended up becoming Spanx. And she was turned away by all these hosiery mills and then finally got a, a phone call weeks later while she was still working on, on her idea. And then she was able to turn that into a multi-billion dollar company Spanx. So there's so many different people who it looks like when their lives were over and their lives were ruined. And in this sense, when we're talking about things like immense physical trauma by people like Janine Shepard, who was the one who was hit by the speeding truck, mm. that is, that is real rock bottom. And a lot of people feel that when they've lost a job or uh, they've had a relationship break down, of course, these things are, are very, very traumatic, but having the immense physical pain of, of having your entire life and identity taken away is really taking that to the next level. So mm -hmm. the people in this book and the film who have gone through that, it's just a great lesson and an inspiring point for all of us in our darkest days to, uh, yeah, to move forward. Yeah. And I, I love the book and I, I remember Janine Shepard and it's interesting. I have a friend right now going through severe um, physical trauma in his body. He's not able to work right now because of what's going on. And I, I shared that story with him and I said, listen, she, she got through this. She ran over, got run over by a truck and is now flying airplanes. And when I heard her story, I thought, what part of her thought when she couldn't walk and she's in the full body cast thought, hmm, I could do that even if I can't walk. And that is just so inspiring to me. I mean, when you think, hey, I can't walk, but I'm going to fly an airplane. It's, it's a beautiful metaphor, isn't it? I really love that one too. It's probably my favorite out of all the stories. And that, that one crossroads moment in Janine's story where she clasped her hands together and said, dear God, show me a way through or show me a way out. Hmm. To see an airplane after that fly overhead and then say to herself, if I can't walk, I'll fly. It's just hmm. a amazing metaphor from uh, such a beautiful person. Janine and I have, have become uh, very good friends as a result of, of meeting through this whole process. But yeah, anyone I know who's gone through a, a medical or physical trauma of some sort or has a family member going through that, I, I pick up a copy of Defiant, Janine Shepard's book and, and send that to them as well. It's such a powerful message. Absolutely. And you're right. All the stories shared in your book are from very successful people that were not always successful that had been in the dumps who had been in really terrible situations or, or um, crisis at one point in their life or failures. They picked back up, had that tenacity, that will, that focus to keep going forward. And you, we've talked about, and we've heard about law of attraction. And I think where it gets confusing and where people think, Hey, I just sit here, think good thoughts and things will come. The thing that's very actionable about thinking grow rich and your book is if you really take the points put in there and realize that there's it's, it's really taking action it, it's positive it's keeping the focus tenacity but it's really uh, the action behind all those things as well as your mind definitely and i think that's what the movie the secret pro which i enjoyed but it probably uh when a lot of people saw that film and then thought oh my god this movie it says that you can get the best car park in a giant shopping center just by thinking about it well they didn't really emphasize the importance of action Mm -hmm. and things like auto suggestion to repeat it over and over again until you believe it. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite quotes from this whole project for Thinking Grow Rich, the legacy is from Lewis Howes, who is the host of the School of Greatness podcast and two time New York Times bestselling author, when he says, above all action every single day. That that really is it. Like taking action seven days a week it doesn't matter what your goals are but if your actions and your behaviors don't match your goals you've either got to step up the action or you've got to really reduce uh, what you think is possible or your expectations of what is possible for you and, and that's so interesting james and, and i think that's the, probably the biggest part of it that's hard for everyone including myself at times in my life uh, I've, I've told the story on the show before on Savvy, but I've always been really blessed with finding wonderful places to live that are great neighborhoods, really 
inexpensive apartments I can afford, but well be below often market value. And, and this uh, particular apartment here in New York, I was looking and I said, I don't want to spend more than X, Y, Z, which is below market value. But I said, it's going to happen. I want it. I went to five different agencies. Some just ripped up my application and said, you're wasting our time. Get out. The last one I went to, I'm sitting in the chair and she's like, listen, uh, I got other people to take care of. We're not going to be able to help you. This doesn't exist. I knew it had because ever since my 20s, I've been finding wonderful places all through New York. And right when she was talking to me, the phone rang and it was an ad just coming in, a placement for this apartment for 200 less than I, I, my, my max. Believe it or not, $500 um, for this apartment, this studio apartment. And she, her mouth dropped. She, you know, hung up and said, you're not gonna believe this. An apartment just came in for $533. I said, yeah, I believe it. Let's go look at it. I mean, it, you could eat off the floor. It's a beautiful apartment, <laughs> great neighborhood. Um, but see, that's the part of the thing that we talk about action It's not only having the belief that something in yourself or something about an action or a situation is possible, but then taking the action and not letting anyone's doubt steer you off the end result. Yeah, and there's a there's a story in the book by a man by the name of Blaine uh, Bartlett, and his his story is really fascinating as well. And he's not as much of a household name as maybe a Rob Deerdeck or a Barbara Corcoran, but mm -hmm. he actually uh, lost his wife. And he talks about when he went and I don't even remember if I put this in the book or if it's something that he just told me during the interview. But when he went and he poured her ashes into the water, I think from memory it was in Hawaii, which was their mm -hmm. favorite place, and the way that the water took the ashes and it was his how he felt about the spiritual force of the energy about becoming one with the ocean and how mm -hmm. uh, everything and every energy force does live on. But the a big theme from his story is that miracles happen every day on the condition that you're open to them. And it is so powerful because once you really open yourself up to, to what is possible, and I know that probably sounds very, very spiritual for a lot of other people, but when you are open to miracles, they do happen every day. They absolutely do. And they've happened so many times. I think what people think of miracles, though, is that they have to be like a lightning coming out of a bolt of lightning from heaven. And it's going to be <laughs> super spectacular. And sometimes there are little blessings and, and miracles that we even take for granted. Definitely. Uh, sometimes things that it's only five years or 10 years down the track, we realize that this particularly trying event was actually the best thing that ever happened to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and just like uh, a number of years ago, I was struggling and I had been praying for years to find my partner in life. I wanted a partner that would be perfect for me. I was dating and really not connecting with anyone. I was praying about it and getting pretty impatient. Like, God, where is he? I, I'm, I'm ready. Where is, and uh, my wonderful partner showed up 12 years ago now. We met through letters and he didn't even seem interested in me at first. And, and that's where the, what seems like misfortune, if you just were to wrap it up and keep going, you'll miss out on the wonderful opportunities. Uh, Think and Grow Rich outlined it beautifully where they were just, just a teeny bit away from the gold or oil and bam, they, they kept <laughs> with it and they, they had the, the results, the reward. But it's like anything in life, you know, sometimes just keep going with it just a little bit longer uh, and you'll actually meet the reward that's just behind the, what seems misfortune or that you're not reaching the goal. Yeah, definitely. It's very, very true. And I think when adversity strikes, uh, a lot of people, if not most people, allow it to occupy their mind in a negative way and they start to go through life with a chip on their shoulder maybe it's a divorce or some sort of medical diagnosis whatever it is and i'm not trying to say that those things are significant they're very 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 significant but if you can remain positive through all that put a great plan in place make sure your environment around you is very positive and helping you achieve your goals and you surround yourself with winners and people who believe in you and they know exactly where you're going and how they can help that is such an important way and really is the blueprint for how all these people have been able to achieve success sustained. Because another, another big thing I wanted to get across with Think and Grow Rich, the legacy was that a lot of people overcomplicated it. Really, it kills me when I see things on Facebook about people advertising, spent $10,000 for my course and I will teach you the secret to success, like all these complicated things. And there is no secret to success it is doing the basics consistently mm. it's focusing on just keep it simple but be consistent because over time like a compound interest graph these seemingly normal and consistent actions add up to massive 
success over time. So that is another key theme of everyone in this book that they were able to do the little things that consistently added up to massive effort. And it also meant that they were perfectly prepared for the opportunities that came their way. Yeah, I love that you mentioned it. I don't know where that came from in our culture where this kind of, well, maybe it's the instant gratification thing with the credit and then it's kind of moved into all areas of our life where, hey, if I can get this today, why wait for tomorrow? And maybe it just kind of translated into everything. But this idea in our culture where we should be able to have it, we should be able to have it now. And if not, I should be able to pay a lot of money to get it now without any effort. Where does that come from? Yeah, I think all the marketing copywriters, once they did all their tests around what they know, what works, what converts to a sale, and at the end of the day, they just want their dollars. They don't really care as much about the, mm-hmm. the end consumer and the end result as, as much as they should. So, it, yeah, it's uh, something that I'm not very comfortable with. A lot of those, uh, a lot of those in Australia, we say the word dodgy. I'm not sure what the, or maybe unscrupulous is the word over here. I like dodgy. dodgy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. it's like, well, at the end of the day, as long as people are being genuine and authentic in, in how they want to help people and you have an alignment of values, I think that's very, very important. But the ones who are just trying to fleece other people to line their own pockets is something that doesn't sit very well for me at all. Well, I'd say if anyone listening in, how do you know what's the best direction to go in? I'd say look at the person and their, and their life. Do they seem, are they successful themselves? A lot of people will talk the talk, but are they walking the walk? So look behind their, their actions themselves. Are they truly successful? Because the thing about social media, and I love social media, it can paint a picture that sometimes is not all that realistic of this person rocking and rolling. And when you go a little bit deeper, they're not all that, you know, doing all that awesome as they try to look on social media. So I'd say do your homework before you yeah. go and I would agree. I would much rather judge someone by the quality and the strength of their personal relationships and their contributions to society than the number of Lamborghinis or Ferraris that they've got in their uh, in the driveway. They could have rented for that day. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> like a rap video. <laughs> but you mentioned something very important, James, that your book covers and also Think and Grow Rich, the original book, which is how important it is to have the environment and the right people around you that are success minded people. Uh, I mean, we all have people around us who might be family or friends are well meaning, but they're like, no, no, stay this safe or stay in your job. Don't go reaching out to, you know, start that new business or do whatever your venture is. Um, you know, maybe if you've had a bad injury like Janine, Oh no, 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 no. You don't want to go try to fly a plane. They are well meaning, but you know, you, you have to go with that pull of your heart and hanging out with people who have actually accomplished it or who are going to support you on your journey. Definitely. It's a, as a friend of mine, Tim Story said, it's like giving birth to your idea is finding out you're in a drive and passion of what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And you cannot expect anyone else to understand uh, the feelings and the passion and the drive that you had. You can try as much as you can. I'm very big on getting people to complete goal sheets and then get people who are most important in their life, whether a spouse or a, a parent or a friend or a work colleague to do the same sheet and then exchange. So you're instantly on the same page around what you want to achieve financially, professionally, uh, what are your physical goals? And that way you really helps you hold each other accountable and you can support each other. But it's a, everyone wants to give advice. Mm. I think people need to be very, very careful around what advice they actually believe. If it's someone who has achieved the success that you want to achieve, then I think that person uh, is in a great position to be able to do it. But even then, they may not have the situational awareness. So if someone wants to listen to their mum, like, I love my mum. She's the nicest person in the whole world, and she's probably listening to this right now. She might give me advice on something, but that doesn't mean she has the situational awareness awareness on the best solution to the problem and I love hearing her advice and getting her advice because she cares about me more than anyone else does on the planet but that might necessarily be the thing that I need to hear right in that moment and in Think and Grow Rich the Legacy there's a a man by the name of David Meltzer who's a lovely guy he's the CEO of Sports One Marketing and formerly the head of the Lee Steinberg Sports Agency who's the the real life Jerry Maguire and he talks about when he was at a bit of a crossroads in university and he wanted to, he had two options. He could go and be an oil and gas litigator or he could get a job working with something called the internet, which was in its infancy in that stage. And he sought counsel from a fair few people like his university professors and then spoke to his mum. Mm-hmm. And his mum said, go for something solid, become an oil and gas litigator. Don't go for the internet because it's a fad. 
And mm -hmm. obviously, since we're currently talking via the uh, the internet, we know that that wasn't a fad. And he uh, he took the internet job and has gone on to be tremendously successful mm -hmm. as a result of that. And it's a really important thing that I actually got from David's story that just because mm -hmm. someone loves you mm -hmm. and has the best uh, intent for you, that doesn't mean they have the situational awareness to help you. Only you mm -hmm. can, you know, you have to be the one who really thinks about what you want. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, get counsel from as many people as you can, but just make sure you listen to your inner voice more than anything else. Absolutely. And it's interesting when I got started uh, and you, as you said, situational awareness, they haven't had the experience where you're at right now. A lot of my great wonderful successes in, in Savvy and in also my consulting business was really listening to my prayer and listening to God. And some of the information that came through in my prayer doesn't make any sense. And that's what I picked up from your book too. A lot of the people who had reached out and were going through building success or, you know, on the way to it had information in, you know, downloaded into their heart or whatever that didn't make any sense. If the rational person on the street say, no, no, that's crazy. Don't even listen to that. That's, that's some you know, inner crazy voice, don't listen to it. But that inner crazy voice sometimes is just what you need to listen to, but it won't make sense to others around you often. Yeah, it's, it's so true. It's only, only you're the one who, yeah, you're the only one who has this dream inside you and you can, only you can understand just how strong that, that flame is burning. And an example of Warren Moon that we have in the book, he went on to, he was a very successful college football player, quarterback, and no one would draft a black quarterback at that stage to be the face of their franchise. So he ended up going to the Canadian Football League. And it was only after he won something like six consecutive Grey Cups, which is the equivalent of the Super Bowl in Canada, that he got drafted back in the NFL for the first time because he knew deep down that he was going to be an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter that no one else believed it. So he, he was an amazing example. of. I think he's actually in the chapter on persistence mm -hmm. in the book. So but as well, we need to be gentle and understanding and kind to people who do just have our best interests at heart but yeah understand that you're the one who really needs to yeah fan the, the flames of ambition and, and make it happen yeah listen but go forward with action and uh, you mentioned something else very important that was environment i have a very uh, good business mentor i love uh, david nagel and he said at the beginning of his time getting his business started he didn't have a lot to go with there was one point in time where he had a makeshift furniture where he put a beautiful tablecloth and flowers on it but he's very much about while you're moving in the direction of wherever your success is that you make the environment as success friendly, as it were, you know, if you're in a shabby place in the garage somewhere trying to build your business and there's like dirt and everything around, it's not going to really kind of push you forward and feeling that energy of we're moving towards success. But if you make your space as pretty as you possibly can where you're at. Yeah, definitely. It's a, uh, I think, mm -hmm when people have their place, some, certainly people who are creative in, in the creative field, it's very difficult to have clutter around because it will certainly for me personally, it just stresses me out as soon as I see a bed that's not made or plates and glasses sitting in the, in the sink overnight. So that will, that will never happen under the roof where I'm living in because I would rather just action it to make yeah. sure it frees me up creatively rather than stress me out. But people who, they might have a, a weight loss goal, but there's no point having that if you've got 10 gallons of of coca-cola sitting in the, in the fridge because guess what at your weak point you're going to go and get in there and, and get into it and mm -hmm. making sure you're surrounded by an environment that it aligns with who you are and where you want to be mm -hmm. but another important point on that is the people that you associate with and, and hang around with because if you're hanging around people who don't align with your values they they bring you down rather than bring you up they're in it for themselves and they just they don't really you just get the vibe that they're not one of your tribe long term mm. and just because you happen to have some uh, maybe a shared history with them that doesn't mean that you have a shared future with them you need to find the people who are where you want to be mm -hmm. and add value to them in a way without expecting anything in return and by doing that and increasingly becoming a person of value yourself by your own self-help and personal development and attending events and meeting people that is another very key ingredient in success Mm -hmm. And what I find is building the belief system, it's not an overnight thing. I mean, for myself, believing in myself, 
it really takes stretching yourself and getting uncomfortable. In the beginning, everything I did felt uncomfortable when I started my business and I just had to keep going. And uh, as you keep going and you meet new people and you learn, then you begin to build your confidence and, and have more belief in yourself. Because I think the number one thing, well, I don't believe it's possible. I don't believe I can lose a hundred pounds. I don't believe I can start a business or whatever it is, fly a plane. It's, it's just taking, as you said, the actionable steps. And as you continue to take action, you'll build your confidence. Absolutely. Think about if you've got two people and one person says, I am not going to lose weight. And the other person says, I'm going to lose weight and says it decisively. Who do you think has the best chance of success? Like I would put my money every day of the week on the person who says that they will do it. They might not deep down, they really might not believe it at that point, but through the process of auto suggestion and the other principles of think and grow rich, that's how over time they believe it. And the thing that, I learned through this whole process was I thought that people like Bob Proctor had just trained their brains to believe it off the bat, but they don't. It's through the process of auto suggestion, repeating their affirmation and their statement of intent, intent out loud and feeling every associated emotion of already having that goal mm. and within their possession, doing that twice a day over time. That is how they start to believe it. And when they really, really, really believe it, it's already happened. It just hasn't manifested physically. And over time, they'll start to attract people into their life who can, who can make that happen. That, to me, is the whole essence of the law of attraction that gets a little bit lost in uh, the way it's presented sometimes. Absolutely, James. Absolutely. We started, what you see behind us is the um, stage that we built in my boyfriend's um, parents' backyard. And it's uh, in pieces, module, where we can take it in a truck. We've moved it to Manhattan for a couple of shows. <laughs> and, yeah. So we do a live show where we interview someone and then we have a networking event. So what was interesting about that, it was my partner idea. We had gone for a marketing event where I had um, 20 or so marketers who had been past guests. We came today for a day of marketing and sales and I hosted it, DJ, and they came and shared their knowledge. And while we were getting ready for that event, they had set it up in such a way where they had two chairs facing each other with a little table and flowers and two coffee cups on it. So it looked like it was ready for an interview. And I mean, that's what I do. Um, but my partner came in and said, you know, this is a good idea. You should do this in front of an audience. And uh, this was five, six years ago. And I said, yeah, 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 whatever. Let's get these chairs fixed up. Yeah. But um, years later, when we started to think about bringing it on the road and doing the live show, which you might've seen on the website, it started with my partner's vision. And then I came on board with the vision and we didn't let people tell us, oh, you know, it's going to be too much money. It's too much, you know, whatever, whatever. We just had the vision and went forward. And I, I think that's not just the actions are important, but also seeing the end result and moving towards that in every little step towards the end result vision. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes even you might have a very fixed objective at the end goal, but sometimes either a person that you meet or an event that you go to or something happens in your life or it might turn you in a slightly different direction. And it's only down the time, as Steve Jobs said, you can only connect the dots looking back. Sometimes the universe sends you some things that you can take advantage of and some opportunities that, oh my God, like when Steve Jobs walked into a, a class at university that was talking about, oh, I'm probably, uh, apologies to my graphic design friend, but I forget the name of the, maybe some type of typography, if that's even a word, <laughs> class, where if he hadn't have attended that class, as computers may not have had different types of font, which is just an incredible thing and completely changed the field of graphic design. So his quote, that you can only connect the dots looking back rather than looking forward it's just yeah as long as you put in the daily actions and you've you're very clear on who you want to be and, and where you want to go it's yeah where you end up as long as you trust the universe you'll end up in a, in a beautiful place absolutely and what i found for me as well studied music and i'm not keeping on one post we talked about how sometimes your life isn't one thing you, you'll have one interest another interest and you'll be some people are like, well, pick something already. Go with that. You know, go with something secure. But sometimes, as you said, later on, I've studied voice, I've studied dance, and I've studied theater. You put them all together, and then now, years later, you're like, okay, those were all, you know, things I needed for today, but you couldn't see it back when I was doing it. So true. It's funny. You're having all the voice training and things, but then you have an opportunity to start your own show, and it's like, oh, wow, well, I happen to have a very handy skill for this particular profession. So. Yeah, it works out amazingly well sometimes without us even knowing it. Absolutely. Where can folks get your book and, and see the movie? 
Yeah, they can go to uh, tgrmovie.com. The way we pronounce ours in Australia is difficult, so I've been caught out in the past, but it's tgrmovie.com. <laughs> they can grab a, a copy of the film and, and the audio book and everything is up there as well as a whole heap of bonus footage. But if they just want to grab the book, they can. it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, Walmart. It's, it's absolutely everywhere online. Think and Grow Rich for Legacy. Um, if they want to connect with me, they can go to my personal website, jameswitt.com, J-A-M-E-S-W-H-I-T-T.com. We've actually got a bonus chapter of the book up there on the website available for free downloads. So, uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, that's the best place. And I'd like for everyone to reach out so I can hear more about their stories too. Absolutely, because this isn't just the people in the book. There's so many wonderful people, and I get that from the people who have come on Savvy over the years. There's so many people changing the world, using their great God-given talents and gifts to make a better world. And you've got that inside your heart, every single person listening in or watching this. So go out there, get the book, find your great talent and gift and bring it to the world. It's been such a blessing, James. Thank you so much for coming to share your great talent and gifts today and your book on <laughs> Radio. Thank you for having me, Christina. Great to be here. Savvy Business Radio broadcasts worldwide via a large podcast network celebrating business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and successful individuals. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.